relations approach, liberalising working conditions, coincided with the growing emancipation of women, even if men were reluctant to recognise it. What is that whipcord resilience that lets the weaker sex play half the night, then bob up clear-eyed, ready for the next morning's work? This frail creature strikes her typewriter keys about 40,000 times a day, shifts to capitals and returns the carriage more than a thousand times each. Altogether, a few ounces at a time, she exerts more than five tons of pressure on her dainty fingertips in one day's work. And any way you look at it, women's work is not for sissies. The human relations approach to office management, encouraging everyone to use their initiative, didn't necessarily make the office more efficient. I guess just about every office has someone like Betty. A little short on personality, maybe, but darned efficient. Fact is, many of the procedures and filing systems were set up by Betty in the first place. Oh, Betty, do you have a minute? What is it, Joan? Well, I'm having an awful time checking anything in these guarantee files. It's all alphabetical, and there are millions of them. It takes forever to find any particular one. Well, we haven't been having any trouble. Well, the way they did it at Malco, Betty, saved a lot of time. There, we broke the guarantees down by city, and then alphabetically. That way, when you wanted to check one, you could do it in a jiffy. Seems we could save a lot of time if we do it that way here. But, Mr. Barnes, she's changed the whole file around. I spent an hour looking for just one report. She's tearing down everything I spent years to build up. I just didn't expect such resistance to new ideas. Realising that the human relations approach focusing on the psychology of office behaviour was a rather unpredictable business, many office experts returned to more practical ways of improving efficiency. Just as the scientific management disciples had suggested, surely efficiency must go down if the environment is uncomfortably hot or cold or humid or draughty. Today it's taken for granted that uh, all offices are fitted with air conditioning. The air comes out through slots in the ceiling, circulates round the office, and then goes back up again. The invention, though, that really made this a practical proposition and also radically changed the appearance of the office was the suspended ceiling. This conceals all the air conditioning ducting, uh, the sprinkler system, uh, the lighting, and uh, acoustic tiles to keep the noise levels down. Its origins are obscure, but by 1950 there was a complete kit of parts to suspend everything by these threaded rods. Air conditioning might never have caught on in a temperate country like Britain, except that developers realised that it could be economically rather attractive. Previously, offices had had to be designed in complicated, irregular shapes so that no desk was too far from a window, both for air and light. With air conditioning, developers for the first time could design deep space. So buildings could be put up in simple rectangular blocks that were cheaper to build and provided more area to let. This sort of new look office was presented as being glamorous and efficient. Those who dream in design are always contributing to our ways of work. Working situations benefit from a new kind of layout, bright, open, and inviting. The modern designer creates beauty through simplicity, bringing to active business a look of casualness, a look of luxury, combining to create a new look to American efficiency. German designers went further. In a 50s reaction against fascism, the Schnell brothers, who ran an office furniture business, started proposing bureau landschaft, or office landscaping. The office was to be fully carpeted, a revolution in itself, with desks arranged randomly to break down traditional office hierarchy. And what we need now is some plants. Some plants, some trees, perhaps. Mm. And we have bureau landschaft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At Beecham House, the flora and fauna mix freely in the atmosphere of an English garden. 
Type is type. Executives do whatever executives do. And everyone's more than happy. What better setting for an English rose? Perhaps some enterprising gardener will develop a new flower to mark this breakthrough. He could call it uh, Floribunda Secretaria. Despite all these changes in the appearance of the office, its efficiency still left much to be desired. The swinging 60s accelerated the liberalisation of office regimes, creating new distractions. What makes the ideal shorthand typist? Presentable, but not so glamorous that the big executive's mind goes round like a satellite. Nor yet so plain that he envies his colleagues who are away with Asian flu. You, sir, in the audience, are you an executive? If so, have you ever wondered why your ears burn in the girls' tea break? Mr. Keynes is the best boss I ever had. I wish they were all like him. All I can say, I'm sorry for his wife. Some companies reputedly started adding bromide tablets to the water to suppress their employees' libido. Meanwhile, the office organisation experts had started to put their faith in systems, analysing things like uh, communication and uh, decision-making. On a practical level, though, they noted that the uh, basic office equipment, the filing cabinet, the typewriter and the telephone, had remained basically unchanged since 1900. By 1970, whereas each factory worker operated an average £12,000 worth of plant and machinery, each office worker only had an average £1,000 worth of equipment. The key to improving office efficiency, many experts decided, was automation. Jan? Well, Dennis, I sure am thankful for new technology. With this equipment, I can do just about anything with a few simple commands. My work area is organized, allowing me to move about freely. And to top it off, I can be comfortable all day, thanks to proper lighting and temperature. We sure have come a long way. Thank you, Jan. To most people, this would appear to be an ultra-modern office, working with sophisticated, up-to-date equipment. But we now realize that this type of office is just an old-fashioned system dressed up with new hardware. We know that it's rapidly becoming obsolete. It was felt that until all the new machines were linked together, with all the information processed electronically, efficiency couldn't improve. We're in a race to keep up with the machines, and we're losing. The new office. Just imagine, an office with no stacks and files of paper. It's not futuristic, and it's not far away. Now, changes like this can be difficult, but they're also pretty exciting. And we're all going to be a part of it as the new office evolves. That video was made 14 years ago, and in many ways, this is the office of the future. These cool white surroundings where everything looks efficient and nothing is dirty. Every element carefully designed. The scientific management disciples would feel proud to see it. Their dreams come true. They would have approved of information technology with all the information formally and logically entered into networks of computers. The new office buildings have lighting that doesn't reflect in the computer screens, extra cooling to remove the computer's heat, and false floors to conceal the wires connecting them together. These quite simple requirements persuaded many companies that their offices were obsolete, resulting in the lavish office building boom of the 80s. However, 